OK, now, um, mesdames et messieurs, let's continue our um, stuff on, on um, representation and participation. Now that we've, we've covered um, governance and policy making, now let's see um, what the legislature looks like. Uh, we have a bicameral legislature. The upper house and the lower house. The lower house, I'm turning my back against you. I feel so bad. Perhaps I should do it like this. Uh, the lower house um, is called the National Assembly, Assemblée Nationale. Um, the, the upper house is named the Senate. Uh, there are over 570 members in the National Assembly, 577, I think, in the current assembly and um, about 350 senators in the Senate. Uh, remember, we talked about the fact that in advanced industrialized societies and elsewhere, too, uh, we have the lower houses. So whenever we refer to the parliament, we generally refer to the lower house, uh, which is the more powerful of the two houses. Um, members are elected for five-year terms, and there is voting along excuse me, um, party lines. So there is, in fact, the um, institution of, excuse me, party discipline, OK? Party discipline is very important in the, in the French system. Um, members of the Senate are not popularly elected, 340-something uh, of them. They're chosen by local elected officials at the département level, department level. Um, so their composition is overwhelmingly rural. Um, so there is, in general, a conservative bias because of the rural cleavage, urban-rural cleavage in French politics. So um, the Senate is generally has a conservative bias to it because of its membership, um, each of whom are elected by, um, by the local uh, elected officials. Um, the legislature, in fact, has a limited role. Um, limited in the sense that, that there is the euro limitation imposed by the Constitution. So the Constitution enumerates, in fact, lists the number of areas that the, that the legislature can pass legislation on. Okay, so, so all areas, all policy areas, all fields of policy or sectors of policy are all enumerated by the Constitution. And the Constitution effectively prohibits legislation in areas that are not enumerated in the Constitution. Okay, the Constitution says the, this area, that area, this area, that area, the legislation can pass legislation, and in other areas, no, the legislation cannot act in those areas. So in that respect, uh, the legislature has de jure limited powers or limited roles. Um, the legislature can also have de facto limits in case of executive domination. So um, in general, we have, yes, this is a semi-parliamentary system. Remember, I mentioned that when there is cohabitation, it looks more like a parliamentary system. When there is unified control, it, it looks more like a presidential system. Um, but there is, in a way, in principle, executive domination de facto executive domination um, by the executive of the legislature. Uh, because it's the government as representing the executive that sets the priorities, the parliamentary agenda. Okay, So um, it is the executive that sets the agenda. Um, in conjunction, I mean, the, the cabinet, in con or in line with or under presidential leadership, especially under circumstances of 
uni unified control or united control. Okay? So it is the government that sets the parliamentary agenda. Um, the, the Constitution also provides two institutionalized rules or privileges to the government, to the executive. One is called uh, what's called vote bloqué, block vote, or policy package, or package deal. Um, the government proposes a bill with, let's say, 40 items in the bill. The government can say, I propose it as vote bloqué, meaning I propose it as one set of bills or one set of articles in one bill, and I don't want any amendment. Um, I, I want it to be discussed in one, and I propose it as one. There will, no, there will not be any voting on an article-by-article article basis. There will not be voting as such. We vote for once. Okay? So I don't want or I don't need many questions. I don't like amendments. I propose it as vote bloqué, as one block vote, a package deal. Take it or leave it. As long as I as the head of government have or enjoy parliamentary majority, the fate of the bill is guaranteed, right? It's sealed. So, so, um, so vote bloqué is, is one institution that the Constitution provides for, oh, to, as, as a privilege to the executive. Uh, the government can also call a matter or a bill a confidence matter or a confidence vote. Um, what happens is the government says, look, I propose this bill or a piece of legislation, and I propose it as a confidence vote. So unless there is a motion to cens censor, unless there is a vote of no confidence introduced, unless the opposition or a majority propose, um, proposes a motion of censor, then the government passes the bill more or less automatically. There is no actual vote on the bill. In the Fifth Republic, there has been some increase in time in resorting to these two institutions. Uh, to institutionalize rules, um, the vote bloqué and the confidence vote. Um, these, in a way, given the privileges of the government, i.e. the executive, and therefore its dominance of or by the government of the legislature, uh, the French legislature is increasingly seen as a rubber stamp institution. Okay, so, so it basically, you know, it adopts what the government sets as the agenda. Okay, so, um, so from, I mean, many, many um, see the government, I'm sorry, the legislature as highly ineffective institution. So it basically does whatever the government says or sets. Um, Let's look at the legislature, how a bill is introduced to the parliament. Well, um, a bill is generally introduced by the government to the parliament, to the lower house, the Assemblée Nationale. It is reviewed by a parliamentary commission or parliamentary commissions, depends on uh, the type of the bill. Uh, it is debated. Um, it may be amended in the lower house. If majority of the parliamentarians, uh, the, the Assemblée Nationale, members of the Assemblée Nationale, um, okay it, say yes to it, support it, then it goes to the second chamber. 
goes to the Senate. If both houses of the, um, of the parliament pass the bill, then the bill becomes law. This is very similar uh, elsewhere, too. Um, so so that's, that's the legislative process. In parliamentary elections, um, how do the parliament, uh, or how are the members of the parliament elected? Uh, the members of the parliament are elected um, in two ways. One is members of the National Assembly. Um, these are basically just like the presidential system. We have smaller districts, two ballot, plurality. Two ballot system, we've, we've discussed the two ballot system. Um, the first round, if a candidate receives, or unless a candidate receives more than 50% plus one, simple majority, there is a runoff elections. Huh? And in that district, in that round, the second round, those that have won the largest um, two votes, highest number of votes, will be running in the second run, in the second vote. And whomever gets plurality will become a member of uh, the National Assembly. Um, and in time, I mean, like as, as a result of this, a cohesive coalition wins or gains majority. I'll explain this as I talk about the parties in the system. Um, in France, we have generally uh, coalitions of parties running um, the executive uh, in, in that respect, running the country. And um, if there is a cohesive, I mean, if, if neither of the large parties Parti Socialiste or UMP gain enough of votes for parliamentary majority. There is going to be um, other um, parties uh, going in a coalition with these parties and representing a majority in the parliament. The Senate, as I briefly mentioned, um, members of the Senate are elected by mayors, towns, councillors. Um, because of their strong rural representation, they have um, they've always had a traditional um, or conservative bias, a conservative side to themselves. Um, let's look at the political parties and the party system. Let, let me first um, talk about the party system. In Britain, we had what kind of a party system, ladies and gentlemen? Britain. British party system has traditionally been known as a two-party system. But in fact, we've always, I mean, we've been increasingly having two and a um, parties, OK? Running, I mean, like being, being very important. Um, in the French system, we have a true multi-party system, which has been changing, but still a multi-party system in which we have more than two parties. Generally, we have two large parties and smaller parties um, on a political spectrum. On the political spectrum, we have uh, center, uh, center right, UMP, center left, Parti Socialiste. And on both sides of these parties, we have scattered smaller parties, OK? Um, and in most of the cases, I think in almost all of the cases, uh, we have coalitions running the government, okay? making up a majority, um, and therefore running the government. So, so um, the, the major two parties are called Union um, for a Popular Movement, um, which I mean, which is known by its initials UMP, um, which is in a way um, which has inherited from the um, the earlier parties, um, Rassemblement pour la République, um, and and other parties. 
so, so this is the center right or right wing, center right, right wing coalition, uh, which has been created by um, Charles de Gaulle, and it incorporated small parties in time. So, um, so 1945, the center right party was formed um, by de Gaulle, General de Gaulle, um, and there were smaller parties um, joining the ranks of this larger party. This has been the conservative party um, in France. Um, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, it had been um, staffing both um, institutions, both organs of state, both the presidency as well as uh, the parliament, the National Assembly. Um, but in time from the late 90s, well, from the 1970s onwards, it had been weakening. Um, but later, um, under uh, Monsieur Chirac, President Chirac, uh, from mid 1990s, 1995-ish, uh, Chirac really regained control and um, has ended the process of uh, a decline, secular decline in the popular support for um, the UMP party. So, so it has been uh, quite um, popular uh, with its own coalition. Um, it has been in, it has been in power. Um, 19, uh, I'm sorry, 2000s, 1990s, 2000s, until Monsieur Hollande um, came to power. Uh, 19, late 1990s, except for late 1990s, um, then um, again changing um, in the 2000s. So that's basically the conservative coalition. Um, the second largest party uh, is the Parti Socialiste, a social democratic party, which had been created over a century ago. Um, late 19th century, um, it had been ineffective in staffing the presidency for 20-something, 20 23 years, from 1958 till 1981. Okay, So both organs of the state had been dominated by the predecessors of UMP, right-wing coalitions, the Parti Socialiste had not been able to gain control uh, of either of the two organs of state. So no president coming from um, the Parti Socialiste until 1981, and uh, the legislature had, had not been dominated by, um, by the, um, the Parti Socialiste until then, until the 1980s. So. Um, created over a century ago, as I said, um, had been in decline, um, but it had been revamped by President Mitterrand since 1980s. Um, from the mid-1980s, in part because of Mitterrand's U-turn, had been losing its grip on its um, traditional basis of political support. Um, but it has made a somewhat comeback um, in the most recent elections, um, 2012. Um, so so that, that really change, uh, changed um, the fate of the party. But in, in general, many scholars argue that the Parti Socialist had lost, lost its ideological rigor, ideological power, ideological grip, ideological force over um, the, the French electorate. As you can see, uh, both parties are seen as losing their grip on, um, on, the, on the electorate. Um, smaller parties have been gaining strength. Um, from the left, the Greens, ultra-left Trotskyists, Parti Communiste Francaise, to the Front National, Marine Le Pen's now what used to be um, her father's um, Jean-Marie Le Pen's party, now uh, led by um, Marine Le Pen, uh, which has been really exciting um, for, for many, many um, Frenchmen as well as French 
women. So, so this is, in a way, what the party system looks like. And these are the largest parties with the smaller parties. Uh, the fact that you see two large parties, two large coalitions, and smaller parties should not lead you to the perception that this is a two-party system. Not at all. These parties themselves are coalitions too. Um, but also, the smaller parties make up the running coalitions. So neither of these two parties can run only by themselves, the government. They always ally with, make an alliances, make alliances with, um, with the smaller parties. Um, the electoral system, please, yes. Well, they won't be able to gain majority. They've never gained majority. Um, I mean, uh, it is possible. I mean, it is, it is absolutely possible. Um, what if what used to be a small party, Front National, the 2002 presidential elections, what if Jean-Marie Le Pen, um, I, I may have told you the story of this, um, there were three candidates, um, Mr. Chirac, uh, right wing, um, Mr. Jospin, left wing, and the papa, the father, Le Pen, uh, Front National, okay? Right wing, ultra right, extreme right wing party. Um, these three candidates, everybody was expecting that the first two, the, the highest number of votes, would be shared by um, Monsieur Jospin and Monsieur Chirac. But what happened was, Monsieur Chirac was there as the highest, I mean, who, who got the highest number of votes, highest ratio of votes, um, highest share of votes. But it was, it was Monsieur Le Pen who, who came second, which meant that Monsieur Jospin dropped out of the race. And then in the second round, everybody, I mean, more than two thirds of the French electorate voted for. Mr. Chirac. So small parties can make a huge difference. Um, and Mr. Chirac got ha, a huge amount of votes because the Parti Socialist you know, um, declared that, OK, uh, we want to reach our supporters to vote for um, Mr. Chirac, our chief opponent. Uh, but, but that was the case. And the small party really made a huge difference in the lives of Frenchmen for the next five years. So, um, so we'll see. Elections are coming up in 2017, uh, in less than a year actually, around June, I think. So we'll see how it turns out, um, you know, who is going to get the highest number of votes. Um, and we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, the electoral system, um, things have been changing. Um, nothing is stagnant as expected. Um, there is Americanization of French politics um, in the sense that there has been a trend toward a two-party system. Remember that th there were two large parties, but still, we do not have a two-party system. Let me um, tell you the running coalition now. We've got the Parti Socialiste. We've got the Radical Party of the left. We've got the Greens and others who make up the presidential majority, who make up more than 57% of the seats in the parliament, uh, 331 seats. Uh, the opposition is UMP, New Center, Radical Party, Centrist Alliance, which has about, which enjoys um, more than 36%, uh, 37% of the vote. So, so we see um, in the most recent elections, 2012, the seats in the parliament are divided as 331 under Parti Socialiste. Um, the majority, and we have 
229 seats or 230 seats, um, you know, representing the right wing, center right parties. Um, but, but yes, there has been strengthening of the core two large parties, but we still have other parties um, playing a, a very important role. And, they, and many, many scholars argue that uh, the smaller parties will, will play even a larger role in the 2017 elections. Um, and another Americanization may be that there has been an elevation of personality or personalities um, as opposed to um, policy issues, um, as opposed to ideology. Uh, this was, you know, this was certainly the case uh, when uh, Monsieur Le Pen came to the agenda, when Monsieur Le Pen was there. Um, we had um, then seen uh, Monsieur Sarkozy, um, Madame Ségolène Royal, uh, who had been, you know, two two entirely different personalities. You could have, you should have seen the debates, uh, how personalities mattered much more so than uh, than ideologies, than than policy stances, policy perceptions, solutions, problems um, that they were devising or they were uh, conceiving. And um, Monsieur Hollande, Monsieur Sarkozy, yeah personality differences, you could tell. Um, we'll see what will happen in the 2017 elections, um, you know, whether personalities will take hold or will, will really dominate the scene. But as in the US elections, you've seen all personalities, um, which is, by the way, taking place as we speak uh, now. So. Um, so elevation of personality over ideologies, over policy stances, over issues, policy issues, uh, was another aspect of um, Americanization of French politics. And for many, the party system in France is seen under crisis um, in the sense that, yes, there is a trend towards uh, strengthening of the center-right and center-left parties, but at the same time, the, the votes of the fringe parties had been increasing. And they're mu much more vocal than 20 years ago. So that, that was also um, a shocker. I mean, 2002, 2002, uh, Monsieur Le Pen coming to, you know, coming a second was traumatizing for many. Um, and that we had fringe parties, uh, ultra-left, ultra-right, coming to the scene, um, amassing votes, collecting a lot of votes, much more so than one could have, you know, even dreamed of 20 years ago, um, is, or it has, has been presenting us with a major change and for the large parties, a major challenge, not only a change. Yes, please. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. MHP, yes. Uh-huh. That's a good observation. Yes. Uh, we see we may see Americanization of uh, of the Turkish political system too. Um, as a trend, you know, as part and parcel of a trend towards two political factions or two, you know, those two on the right and those two on the left, and they may be coalescing, um, that this, this is also possible. So, so Americanization of the system um, is, is quite obvious in the French case, and who knows what's going to happen in the Turkish case. Um, political culture, citizenship, and identity-wise, uh, we've got, um, the, in the post-World War II period, two subcultures supporting two parties or two coalitions on the center-right 
and center left. Um, both were at the center. So, so behind the Trente Glorieuse was the consensus that state intervention was important, that employment was important, that rising incomes was important, that the French miracle was important, that, um, that the French way of social model, the French social model was important, that, 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 that the French uh, would identify themselves with their model of society, um, that, that there was a, there was a you know, solid consensus. But, um, but this has been changing. Um, this has been unraveling um, since the 1980s. Um, late 1970s was a, was a blow. But um, you know, Monsieur Mitterrand coming to power was seen by many as a relance, like a relaunch of France. So, um, but, but over time, we've seen that um, the the ideological grip over their constituencies of these parties or by these parties had been loosening up. So, so that was one uh, major element of political culture. Political culture has been changing. And the fact that there are fringe parties on the right, uh, on the right as well as the left, um, had been contributing to the undermining of support for these uh, center or centrist political parties. And there is a rapid decline in ideological or class identification by the French electorate. We've seen this also in Britain with changing appeal of um, new labor, first 1990s, and then conservatives also changing their, their traditional stance towards a more open um, um, more open um, appeal to their electorate. So we've seen um, much changes since 1970s. Um, economic ideas, ideological changes, um, declining unionism, downsizing of uh, industries, especially state economic enterprises, privatization, rolling back the state, uh, changes in welfare state, um, changes in the French model of society, um, really upset the post-World War II consensus uh, and, and um, the institutionalized ways of voting, regime-like ways of voting have been changing since uh, the, I would say, 1970s and all throughout the 80s. Um, citizenship and national identity. We have the Republican model dating back to the late 18th century. Remember the white um, and the red and the blue uh, liberté, égalité, fraternité, um, which really represents Republican ideals, inclusive French society. As long as you would be accepting French values, political values, social values, cultural values, um, as long as you would um, accept French culture as is, um, you'd be entitled to citizenship. Um, those who would be coming from abroad, especially the, the former colonies, as long as you would uh, behave like a Frenchman uh, or a Frenchwoman, then you'd be, you'd be part and parcel of the Republican model. You'd be, you'd be welcomed under the, the French uh, Republican model. I had a colleague and a friend um, whose family was from Réunion. It's, the small, it's one of those small islands off the coast of Madagascar, um, off Africa, in the Indian Ocean. Uh, her, f her family was, um, they were colored. They were from, uh, you know, they were native to Réunion. And um, she was saying, she was talking to, to her family, and uh, she was saying, hey, look, are we really French? And um, they were feeling so much French 
that in the 2000s, um, they said to their daughter, look, the currency we have in our pockets, it's the euro. And before, it was the French franc. So, so we, we, we feel so French. Um, so, so the Republican model, the Republican ideal, was in that respect very inclusive um, or inclusionary. But as long as you would, you would be subsuming your identity under the French Republican model, uh, if you wish to um, you know, emphasize your, your hyphenated identity, then things would become uh, a little bit more messy, especially in the last uh, 30 years or so, um, after probably the world economic crisis that shook all these consensus ideals um, back in the late 1970s, or late, uh, yeah, late 1970s, early 1980s. Um, of course, all of these have ramifications for race, religion, and ethnicity. Um, interestingly, well, strikingly, race, religion, and ethnicity, these are all issues that are ent um, intertwined with immigration, with the phenomenon of immigration, um, because the majority of immigration coming to France, um, they're Muslim um, in faith, uh, which led to um, anti-immigration, anti-Muslim discourses, uh, and all kinds of political opposition, all kinds of uh, movements and lobbies against all this, this um, this phenomenon. Gender-wise, France has been the birthplace of um, feminism. Uh, Simone de Beauvoir, second sex, has been an important, um, has been a vital element of the feminist toolkit. Uh, but there is, excuse me, considerable gender inequality. Um, and the women's movement had been weakening, or had remained rather poor, or rather weak in France. Uh, there has been some constitutional amendments that required gender parity. Um, interestingly, there, is a, there was a law that was passed. Um, the political parties had to nominate an equal number of candidates when entering elections. So um, in the party list, for example, you had one political party running in this district, let's say um, four candidates. For each political party, the four candidates had to be divided into two. You know, two candidates male, two candidates female, two, so, so two women, two men. But this is de jura, de facto, the list goes by rank. How do you think the Frenchmen had ranked these candidates? Two women at the top? So, um, so two men at the top. So, so in general, of course, there's, there, there, were, there were exceptions. Um, but uh, the, the introduction of even legislation uh, or policy of gender parity, um, will that, or is that enough of, or for, changing regime-like patterns, institutionalized patterns, changing the rules of the game? Um, they probably haven't been able to do so. Uh, a little bit more to go. Um, social movements, um, the French system um, of policy making has been, yes, a centralized system, but also an insulated system. So unlike Paris is, is, is never like, or has never been like um, Brussels or, or Washington DC uh, in terms of lobbying efforts and responses to lobbying. Um, so social movements, yes, they've been vocal increasingly, especially the 1990s, since 1990s. Um, but the system itself discourages autonomous citizen action. Um, yes, there has been a, uh, history, a tradition of direct protests since um, the revolution, 
the great French Revolution, but uh, the system, the French political system, um, had been quite insulated in terms of state society relations, had been insulated from all kinds of pressure groups and social movements. Uh, recent upheavals um, in the banlieue um, over the past 10 years or so, uh, November 2005, two Algerian French young men were killed fleeing from um, the police. Uh, there were massive riots um, and the government provided some help for low-income neighborhoods, the banlieue. Um, November 2007, uh, two Muslims were killed in a motorbike collision with, with police. There were youth riots just um, in about two years within the reach, within, within uh, one another. The government planned to increase security assistance, security and also assistance in neighborhoods um, in what were called, or what are still called, the cité. Um, these are all, you know, uh, condominium dwellings uh, on the outskirts of Paris and other large, large cities. Um, so we've seen over the 2000s, um, in addition to these recent upheavals, um, massive mobilization, anti-globalization movement uh, over the erosion of the French social model, French model of society. So people took to the streets. And before then, we've seen, of course, um, um, streets of Paris taken up by, by masses, by thousands, in fact, hundreds of thousands against um, the Iraqi war back in the early 2000s. Um, José Bové was, um, was an interesting um, figure in French politics who was um, opposing agribusiness corporations, who was against the GMOs, standardized methods of producing agricultural produce and um, he was complaining that the fr that the French farmers who've been so strong especially under the Trente Glorieuses and, and immediately after had been losing their powers um, worldwide and that they were supported much less by by these um, subsequent I mean like uh, consecutive governments coming to power um, in the 1980s 1990s and 2000s. Um, finally, um, you know, current challenges, um, many current challenges. The Front National for many is a huge current challenge. Um, and I should have, uh, I should have noted it down as Le Pen's, um, Jean-Marie Le Pen first, Marine Le Pen now. Um, mobilize, have been very successful in mobilizing um, critics of the established system. Um, they've been very, um, very strong, very powerful in, in um, riding the tide of anti-establishment. Uh, that they were saying, OK, it is the entire system is, uh, is corrupt. The entire system is, um, is not in working anymore. So we have to you know, demolish the center. Um, demolish mainstream, and then we have to build a new France. Um, terrorism, the Al Qaeda attacks, um, early two, I mean the, the the 2000s, and then the most recent Paris attack, state of emergency, and the Nice attack, have really traumatizing France. I mean, 90 people, more and and hundreds of people injured, 90, over 90 people dead in Paris. I think 80-something, 90 people were almost um, dead with, with kids um, being, being, you know, anyway, um, atrocities. Um, all of that happening, all these terrorist activities um, under ISIS or IS or Daesh or Daesh, whatever, um, have been, um, had been capturing the political agenda over the past year or so. It's been, it's been a year, um, and, and um, my friends who live in Paris are still devastated, still traumatized by, by, these, um, by these attacks. Um, economic decline, 
didn't help. The Great Recession didn't help. Unemployment increased. Competitiveness of the French system or French economy had been decreasing. Um, the welfare state had been rolling back. Um, and there were reforms and restrictions to right to strikes. There were tax reductions, longer working hours, which really squeezed um, the people, but also states' resources. So, so, um, so, so the French economy model of society is under humongous strains. Uh, there has been there have been Muslim Jewish um, tensions, anti-Semitic violence. Um, 2000 saw all these happening. Uh, Neo-Nazis targeting Muslims, skinheads targeting Jews. Those incidents have been sporadic, ad hoc, but still continuing. Uh, stabbing incidents, killing incidents, assassinations, and all that. And um, finally, political reform um, has been on the agenda since 1990s, well, since the 80s, uh, you know, privatization, but, but also political reform, um, decentralization, um, term limits on the presidency. Uh, but leaders are not trusted. Uh, so that's, that's one major um, problem here. Um, and anti-government demonstrations, uh, people are increasingly taking up to the streets. And um, reforms, yes, there has been some reforms. Um, presence term limits, but also strengthening the parliament, strengthening the legislature, the power of the National Assembly, and the opposition parties. Um, but these reforms do not seem to be suffice in keeping calm uh, in the country. So, so there is some, I mean, like a low level, but steady level of protest. Um, everyone feels in the French capital, but also elsewhere in France. I think this, yeah, that, that concludes our work on France. Um, and next class, as promised, we'll switch to the US case after having heard about the elections today. All right, I'll see you next class.